They've been planning this for a million years. It is the scariest movie of the year. Steven Spielberg's big budget remake of The War of the Worlds. And a little girl from Georgia has star billing right under the name Tom Cruise. Ahead in this half hour, the latest on Dakota Fanning's amazing life as one of the biggest stars in the world. And an inside look at the summer blockbuster everyone is talking about. It's not like work, you know, I mean, it's really a blast. Before I bring you up to date with this all new interview, let's take a quick look back. War of the Worlds is just the latest, if arguably the biggest, in a seemingly endless string of new projects that have kept Dakota Fanning busy since leaving Conyers, Georgia. Every time we planned to go home that day, we always had something to do. When I interviewed her in 2003, Dakota took me to the back lot at Universal Studios, where the town square had undergone some colorful urban renewal. What's it being used for now, Dakota? Now it's being used for the cat in the hat. Critics loved Dakota, but didn't love the cat in the hat. And this unfortunate adaptation of the Dr. Seuss classic is generally considered the single misstep in a career that otherwise can only be described as remarkable for an actress of any age. Already she's worked with many of the biggest names in show business, winning not only their hearts, but also their respect. The parents have done a, a great job in raising her and her feet are on the ground and she's very humble and very, very talented. SpongeBob SquarePants. Popcornopolis. Aren't they cute and they move? Cherry heads. I'll get these. I like these. You want anything else? That's it? No, this is cool. This is good. She and her mom came to L.A. back in 2000 expecting a visit for a couple of weeks. But Hollywood fell head over heels in love with Dakota. Everybody always asks me if I'm north or south, and I always say south. What do you miss about Georgia? I miss the varsity. <laughs> you know, they always say, what do you have, what do you have, what do you have? And that is like, I love that place. And I love the onion rings, and um, I've been craving a naked dog. They always say, I have a naked dog. You want a naked dog? Spicy chicken with peanut that's really, really, really spicy. But with the closest varsity thousands of miles away, this is Dakota's favorite place to eat in L.A. And then do you have um, chopsticks, please? Her first name, by the way, is Hannah. Dakota is actually her middle name. I always look for Dakota and I never find it. We have Hannah. Oh, here's D. Oh, my God, oh. look. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're getting that. We're getting that. That's my name. You don't have a southern accent. I never really had one. You never really had I one? I never really had one, but my mom does. <laughs> and my grandmother and my little sister goes, yay! Yeah. You welcome! You welcome! This Tide commercial was her very first paying job. It was Joy Purvis of the Osbrink Talent Agency in Atlanta who spotted Dakota's star quality and suggested she test the waters in California. It didn't take long. After landing a small role in the comedy, Tomcats, she got her big break in a little movie, I Am Sam. You're not like other daddies. I'm sorry. It's okay, Daddy. Nobody else's daddy ever comes to the park. Dakota shined as Lucy, a bright child whose father is retarded. She's like a ray of light on screen. She's incredible. In addition to praise from her far more experienced co-stars, Dakota's breakthrough performance in I Am Sam won rave reviews and... Dakota Fanning. When they called my name, my heart literally skipped a beat. The Broadcast Film Critics Association recognized Dakota's talent, but forgot about her size. I wasn't expecting this. The microphone was too high for you. Poor Orlando. <laughs> Lord of the Rings hero, Orlando Bloom came to the rescue. I want to thank God for all the um, things that he has given me and for um, one of the best agents in the entire world. <laughs> Clearly, Orlando had not anticipated the length of Dakota's speech, nor had he expected her to weigh as much as a hobbit. 
I want to thank Jesse Nelson and Christine Johnson for letting me be Lucy. I it was a great experience for me. Orlando was holding me up for a long time. I just want to thank Bob Shea and everyone at New Life. Yeah, I want to thank them. And backstage, he was like... <laughs> <clears throat> I had a wonderful time, and I want to thank my mom and my dad and my little sister Elle for everything, and uh, I just want to thank, again, the Broadcast Film Critics Association for everything. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Somebody told me the other day, yeah, I heard you know Orlando Bloom. Did you know he had back problems? <gasps> He has really bad black back problems now. Do you know why? And I was like, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure. Why would you want to marry me for anyhow? Another milestone came when Dakota played Reese Witherspoon as a child in Sweet Home, Alabama. First kiss on screen. Well, we had to do it like 50 times. Was it good or bad? It was kind of a... I mean, it wasn't like a... Uh, she came in to, to play me young, and she, I remember she wrote me a beautiful note on her own stationery. And I said, how old are you? She, I, I don't even know. She's like nine or something. And she was like, yes, I have my own stationery. I thought, well, how, how quintessentially Southern. Oh. My. God. You're my new nanny. In her next big screen appearance, Uptown Girls, she co-starred with Brittany Murphy and a pig. Action. Oh, God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God. Okay, okay, it's gonna be okay. Every time you won't go by, it would go... So, I, every time I walked by, I'd be, like, listening for him to go... And every time I walked by, I'd go change into my dressing room and go... It's, it's, they're adorable. In real life, of course, Dakota is nothing like the snotty rich kid she was playing. News! Flash, you're not gonna. New As usual, flash. Dakota made a friend for life, this time in Brittany Murphy. I quit! Swinging door. Dakota is one of the most extraordinary people that I've met. Just humans forget about her age and my whole entire life. What is the hardest part of your job? When you get to know these people for two months, four months, six months, you feel like you've known them all your life. And then at the end of the movie, it's over. Increasingly, she has been called upon to play kids in danger. In fact, Dakota has been kidnapped in three different films. Kevin Bacon snatched her from Charlize Theron and trapped. The government got a hold of her in the Steven Spielberg miniseries Taken. And Mexican criminals grabbed her right out from under the nose of Denzel Washington in Man on Fire. It was, um really cool, you know, just to see. And I had never really done a movie with all the gunshots and see how all that stuff works and the squibs and the little pings and bag of blood comes out. And, you know, I had never really seen that, so it was a really good learning experience. The reviews were so good for Dakota that Denzel pretended to be upset. I hate her. She's a little, she's too small. She's not that good. I'm much better than her. She can't beat me. She is, I don't know what she is. She's amazing. She's just a little nine-year-old genius. Ironically, Dakota had spent plenty of time at Universal Studios working, but she had always been too small for the rides at Universal until... You are now officially tall enough to ride the Yay! rides. No doubt about it, she was growing up in Hollywood, sprouting an inch for each year away from Georgia. Three inches, woo! <laughs> She's acted scared plenty of times, but this was the real thing. Look over the edge and see if you can find a shark for me. I can't! <laughs> <laughs> I think I've always been an actress, just not in front of the camera. I'm shaking. <laughs> Whoa!
later in this edition of Close Ups. Dakota Fanning is there as Tom Cruise pops the question to Katie Holmes. But first, see how Hollywood's million dollar baby is growing up fast. Monica Kaufman Close Ups, brought to you by the Georgia Lottery Corporation, contributing over $7 billion to education in Georgia. We return to Monica Kaufman Close Ups. Right away, you can see she's grown. <laughs> Look at you, you this is for you. For me? For you. This is Dakota Fanning's favorite ice cream shop, the Cold Stone Creamery in Studio City, where she now lives. Look how tall you are. Oh, no. oh my goodness. It's so good to see you. Oh. The last time we met Dakota, she was so proud of her two pulled teeth. She brought them with her to show me. Right there. These two. Uh, okay. Are the ones that were these. Okay. This time, Dakota brought something I could take home. Yes! See, and it matches perfect. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. I saw it and I thought you would like it. I love it. And as for the teeth, you're wearing braces now. I just have them on the four teeth. That's it. And um, I got the clear kind. And But when I come home, I'm going to change the rubber bands to pink ones. The Tooth Fairy, as I recall, left Dakota just $5 for both teeth. For her work in War of the Worlds, the actress reportedly earned over a million dollars. You have taken off. I mean, you're one of the highest paid actors around here. And you're only 11. I know, you know, it really, I feel so, you know, blessed to be able to do what I am doing. <laughs> She's my friend. A lot has happened in the past two years. First, Dakota celebrated her 10th birthday on the set of Hide and Seek with co-star Robert De Niro in attendance. They brought in my favorite restaurant, Panda Express, as you know. And I felt really bad for regular caterers. They were sitting on the side, you know, like with their little, because they had vegetarian dishes. <laughs> they were just sitting there, and I walked by, and I was like, Oh, I feel so bad I got a piece of bread, you know? <laughs> I felt bad for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I felt so bad because everybody was like, oh, this Pan Express is so great. Oh, my God, I wish we could have this every day. And they were just like, want some tofu? <laughs> I'm bloody my hands up for the soon. Charlie did it. You do believe me, don't you, Daddy? Just a few days before our interview, Dakota's frightened performance in Hide and Seek won her an MTV Movie Award. This is the best popcorn I've ever had. Thanks! Where is the popcorn statue? What happens is when you go backstage, they take it from you, because there's actually, like, only one, and so they take it, and then they're going to send me my actual one. She'd soon be called upon to give another frightened performance in War of the Worlds. But Dakota already has two other films in the can. You are a great champion. As a girl named Kale, she nurses an injured racehorse back to health in Dreamer. Kurt Russell, who plays her dad, was so taken with Dakota that he bought her a horse of her own. She named it Goldie. He's so cute. <laughs> He's so pretty. And all the stuff for him is pink. Dakota also traveled to Australia for what she says was her dream role, Fern in the children's classic Charlotte's Web. You are not good for my weight loss. <laughs> Dreamer and Charlotte's Web may be the last movies in which you see Dakota playing kids on screen. She acknowledges soon she'll be looking for older roles. When Dakota Fanning came to Hollywood, one of the first things she did was visit the famous Grauman's Chinese Theater, where she noticed the tiny handprints and footprints of Shirley Temple, perhaps the most famous child star ever. I put my hands and feet there, and they were perfect fit. So just for fun, I took Dakota back to the Chinese Theater, accompanied by her little sister, Elle, who also is an actress. And guess what? Her hands are a lot bigger now. I like that. See how much you've grown? I can't believe it. You know, you could end up on that sidewalk one day. Oh, I, I can't even imagine that. Like a modern-day Shirley Temple, Dakota Fanning seems unspoiled by all of the success. 
all of the attention. You know, I'll be in the middle of the scene and I'll be thinking, am I really, I mean, is this really like happening? Is this really going on? You know what I mean? So it's kind of hard to believe in ways. After the publicity tour for War of the Worlds is over, Dakota will be taking the summer off. I don't know what's going to be next. Can't wait to see. Coming up, a special preview of War of the Worlds, courtesy of Dakota Fanning. Monica Kaufman Close-Ups, brought to you by the Georgia Lottery Corporation, contributing over $7 billion to education in Georgia. Make no mistake, this is not your daddy's War of the World. It's more based on the book than the original movie. Yes, there are aliens in the movie, and yes, Steven Spielberg is the director. But leave all those warm, fuzzy memories at home. You're not going to see Close Encounters or E.T. War of the Worlds is a science fiction horror film. It was scary, actually. You know, doing it, it was kind of freaky. I can't wait for everybody to see it. Some people have already said that this is your best role ever that you in some ways steal the movie. Oh, that is nice. I don't know about that. Steven Spielberg, who certainly knows a talented kid when he sees one, cast Dakota as Tom Cruise's daughter in War of the Worlds. Of course, he already knew what he was getting. Dakota had played Allie, the part human, part alien narrator and central character in Taken, the Emmy-winning miniseries he produced for the Sci-Fi Channel. Rachel, the character Dakota plays in War of the Worlds, is far more normal, although she does find herself in extraordinary circumstances. In between all this, you know, action and the, the aliens are coming, really it's a story of a family. Tom plays my dad, and my mother, who's played by Miranda Otto, drops her two kids off at, you know, her ex-husband's house. Well, the point is, I've got my cell phone, so if anything comes up or you have any questions, just call Believe me. Believe it or not, I can't handle it. Soon, strange things start to happen. That is so weird. The wind is blowing toward the storm. It's okay. Lightning doesn't strike twice. People realize this is not normal. Whose car is this? Whose car is this? Then this attack happens, and so he is left with us. Um, and I'm kind of a, mo a mama's girl in um, the movie, so I, what I want most is to be back with my mom, which is what I would be like, because I love my mom so much. Get down! It's about, you know, the dad, Tom, trying to, you know, learn who his kids are, and he doesn't know much about them, and they don't have that great of a relationship, and he's just trying to keep them safe and get to know them at the same time. Uh, okay, let's be honest here. Tom Cruise. Well, the first time I saw him, uh, first time I met them on the set, he grabbed me and he said, We're making War of the Worlds, baby! And he, he screamed it at me and I was like, Yeah. <laughs> I am. Two, one. To say that Dakota and Tom became close is an understatement. And so Tom actually had me on his back, and he was swimming. <laughs> and we go down to the bottom of the tank, and I was on his back. Then we come up, and I was on his back. Tom didn't have to carry the movie by himself, but he was on his own when it came to carrying his young co-star. Orlando Bloom, no doubt, will sympathize. She's got this whole Scarlett O'Hara thing going on, you know what I mean? Well, he carries me a lot, you know, in the scenes of the films, and so we would pretend and we would joke that, you know, it's in my contract that he has to carry me everywhere. So he carried me around. It was fun. It's part of a contract. I have to carry her everywhere. Tom and Dakota kept the joke going on the MTV Movie Awards earlier this month. Part of her contract, I have to carry her everywhere. We got to dish some dirt here, okay? I couldn't resist asking about Tom's much discussed romance with Katie Holmes. Was Katie there? I met her the other day. And? She was so nice that um, they're so happy, and I feel so, I'm so happy for so him. Did you In fact, Dakota was right there, sitting next to Tom in France, 
during a mammoth promotional tour for War of the World when he made the big announcement. Yes, I proposed to Kate last night. Yeah. Tom is so happy, and I was there the same night at the Eiffel Tower that he proposed to her. You know, I, I wish them the happiest marriage that anyone has ever had, because they both deserve it so much. <laughs> In a single week, Dakota traveled with Cruz, Spielberg, and company to world premieres in Paris, Marseille, London, and even Tokyo. What have you learned to say? Um, one thing. What's that? Konnichiwa. And that I'm means? I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> it was a whirlwind, but now I can't wait to travel to more places. As for the movie, Dakota says even she was scared when she saw it. You know, I really felt a, res a responsibility. You know, Stephen chose me to be in the movie, and I felt so honored to do that, and I just really wanted to do good, you know, for Tom and Stephen. That puts pressure on a little person like you. No, you know, they, they, made, they made me, you know, feel so comfortable, and so I really just got to know them, you know, like my family after a while. Wise beyond her years, Dakota already is thinking of the future. I definitely want to go to college, and um, I think it'd be really fun to direct one day. Until then, expect to see lots more of this Georgia peach on the big screen. Have we lost you? Are you now officially a California girl? No. No, I'm not. I'm not officially. Definitely not. I'm still Georgia, even though I haven't been there in three years. Limousine service for Monica Kaufman close-ups provided by Legacy Limousines of Atlanta.